Well, welcome. This is Robert Imbriali, and today we're going to be talking about getting your posts, your social media posts, seen and more importantly, read and even responded to. Uh, it's one of the things that's really hard for a lot of business owners. They don't quite understand this whole concept of how this works. So we're going to talk about that today. I think we're going to have some, some great information for you that'll help you uh, when it comes time to really thinking about what you're going to be posting in social media. Stay with us. We're going to have some fun. Okay, like you, I do a lot of social media posting. I, I think, uh, you know, right now, I think all of us are involved in that in one way or another. And the cool thing is, uh, you know, we have a lot of different networks. We can play with Facebook, obviously. We can pay, play in Twitter. Uh, there's Tumblr. There's, uh, what's the other one there that I don't use very much? Well, I don't, you know, I'm playing around with a lot of different uh, social media networks. And now, more and more, I'm playing around with a lot of the uh, live streaming networks because I'm having a lot of fun there. And I think a lot of people are getting value out of what uh, you know these networks bring to the table but the real question is always well how do I get more viewers how do I get more people to interact with the posts that I'm doing how do I get you know people to respond and leave comments and all that kind of thing and there's a there's an old adage in marketing that Dan Kennedy has been very very famous about talking about and you you could be quick to dismiss it because you've heard it so much right and the adage is that your message has to match the market okay that seems logical, right? If the message isn't of interest to your market, your market's not going to pay attention, is not going to, uh, you know, really respond or, or re really read or, or interact with your content. It's really true. I have a lot of people who are coaches who work with me, and, and uh, I think you've heard this before. You know, people come up to you and I'm a coach. What do you coach on? Well, I can coach on anything. Well, that's true. That's how we were trained. We were trained to coach. I was trained by Tony Robbins. Uh, you know, I was trained to coach people in any kind of situation. But if you ask me, do I really want to be the guy coaching the person off the ledge? <laughs> you know, I could do it. I have done it. I've done it five different times. Uh, but truthfully, is that really what I want to do? Is that really what I want to dedicate my life to? And the answer there is no, that's not really what I want to dedicate my life to. So while I could go out there and say I can coach you on anything at any time for any reason, the truth is that would be a really disastrous way to market myself. And uh, the quickest way to be poor, remain poor, uh, is to do that. And yet, if you look at social media, it's the same game, right? We're posting stuff on social media all the time. And what you're getting is if you get a lot of likes for what you're putting out there, you get a lot of people showing up to your broadcasts, then obviously you're talking about a topic that has resonance. Now, you may be surprised to know, but I'm going to share this with you. It's a dirty little secret in marketing that most of the marketing that we professionals, professionals do doesn't get the response that you think it would. Now, what you're programmed or really what we bring out to tell you about is all our success stories, right? So we did one post and we've got 500 likes on one post and that's what you're going to hear. But what you're not going to hear is the backstory to that where I did 500 posts that got no response, right? So you're, you're, you're getting the uh, sort of a wrong picture. And I think that's doing a lot of people a disservice because they'll come into social media and they'll say, I'm going to go post something on Instagram or I'm going to post something on Facebook and they get no interaction. Nobody looks at that or nobody clicks on it. Nobody likes it. Nobody shares it. And they go, well, this whole thing doesn't work for me. I really don't like this. This isn't my game. Um, truth is, it could be very well your game, but you're just posting things that people aren't interested in. So the message that you're putting out there isn't matching the market that you're reaching. It's a problem, right? Because th that mismatch ruins everything. So forget about making sales. Forget about building relationships. Forget about everything. If those two pieces aren't in alignment, you're in trouble. In trouble in more ways than I could even talk about uh, you know, in, in a podcast like this. So... You have to really get clear on what it is that you do. So I'm going to use a coaching example today because that's the world that I play in. I work with a lot of coaches, chiropractors, professionals, those kind of people who really can help with a wide variety of things. So I can coach you on personal development stuff. Personally, I can do that. I've been doing it since 1995. I can coach you on marketing. I've been a professional marketer since 1989. I've been selling online since 1989, believe it or not. So I've been doing this a very long time. So if you've got questions in those areas, I can help you with all of that. But how do I market that? Well, the truth is I can't, right? It's just too big of a message and it doesn't resonate. Now, if I came to you instead and said, if I'm a chiropractor, and I said, are you having trouble sleeping at night? Right? 
Can I help with that if I'm a chiropractor? Yeah, I probably have solutions for that. Are you having trouble sleeping at night? Reaches a very, very, very specific market, a very tiny niche of people who are having problems. Are they more likely, more likely to listen to that message if they're having that issue? Well, of course they are, right? So in that case, the message is matching what the market is looking for. The market's looking for an answer to how do I sleep better? You're coming out and you're saying, I've got solutions to show you how to sleep better. You you see this problem in network marketing all the time. People get involved and they get all excited and the products are great and they're wonderful and all this and you can cure this and you could stop this. You could, and it's like, it's just overwhelming. It's like this gushing of stuff that doesn't make any sense. And what happens is instead of it falling on, on the ears of people who could take action, they could, you know, could make a difference for them. What ends up happening instead is the message it just goes right by because there's too much of it. I can't process it all. So you really got to look at your marketing rather than looking at it as, and I know this is a hard thing. It was for me when I first got started too. How do I, literally, how do I really think about just wanting to reach this little segment over here versus being able to reach everyone with my message? And the truth is the power really is in reaching the segment, not in reaching the masses. And I know we'll all look at the Tony Robbins of the world and we say, oh, I want to be like him. Well, he didn't start there. Right. He really started out very, very specifically. If you look at the the story, he started out doing very specific kinds of coaching. And after that, it started to expand and started to expand. He got known for more and more things. But we all have to start there. So here's the tip I'm going to give you today. And I think this is going to be valuable for a lot of you. I know that uh, I've helped so many coaches become more successful because I've given them this little strategy instead of going out there and trying to promote your products, your services, whatever it is that you do as the end-all be-all for everything, just pick one. Now, don't get scared here because picking one does not mean you're stuck there forever. Here's what I say. Make your first million in the small little niche, right? And then once you've got the first million, you've got money in the bank, you're feeling good, you want to bring on a second niche, go ahead and do that. But don't do that right away. Start out with one because you won't get there unless you start out with something that's a little bit more narrow focused. So I come along and I say, I am a coach who can help you with, right? And my list is long. There's a lot of things that I can help you with. But truthfully, you can't respond to all of those things. So I could say to you, I can help you get more response to your social media posts. That's something you might be interested in. If you're not, then that's, this isn't for you. Although you may be a prospective customer for something else, right now I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a very specific message, right? So when I do that, what I find is I get a lot of the same kinds of people responding, right? People who are posting a lot on social media, for instance, who are not getting the results they're looking for or expecting to get bigger results than they're actually seeing. Now, what's really cool about that when you start to play that game that way is... You don't have to work as hard because, you know, you find the solution for one. It's pretty much a solution for all of them, right? So you got to get the, get that going on. But it can get boring after a while. And sure enough, after a while, I'm talking about, okay, let me increase your, your interaction with your social media posts. Okay, how long is that going to last? Maybe six months. Then I'm bored and I want to move on and do something else. I can. Why? Because I've done very well with this. I've got money in the bank. There's, there's uh, clients that are coming back again and again. And that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. So I would suggest to you. If you haven't done this already, go narrow first. The narrower you can be, the more focused you can be with that message, the better off you're going to be. So let's take the chiropractic example, right? For some of you who, you know, uh, frequent chiropractors, if a chiropractor says, well, we can do back adjustments, we can help you with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, we can help you with vitamins, nutrition, all the rest of that, again, overwhelming, right? You, you aren't resonating with that. But if your back's hurting, And you happen to see an ad or a post from them and they say, suffering from lower back pain, I have a solution. Are you going to pay attention to that? Well, the answer is yes, you are. So I'm going to give you a little uh, word picture. Now, normally, if I was in a, you know, a regular seminar, I might draw this on the board. Well, you can get this. This is going to be very easy. Picture a hotel conference room, right? The big conference rooms you go into and all all the chairs and there's a stage at the front and there's one speaker in there. In that conference room, how many doors are there typically? There are more than one, right? So there might be two, four, six, there may be 10, 15, 20 doors uh, if you look at it that way. So what I suggest to you is each one of these niches is really a doorway into the core content that you share, which is what's going to happen in that seminar room. That seminar is not going to be different if you're a dentist versus a chiropractor versus a coach. It's going to be the same content. However, if you know I said this is a dentist seminar and you identify yourself as a chiropractor, you're not going to walk through that door. So what I do instead is I say, I'm going to give a very specific message. And that message is going to attract a very specific group of people. And they are going to come through door number one. 
Now I'm going to use a very different message going after a different market segment, and those people are going to be attracted to coming through door number two. At the end of the day, they're buying me. I'm the same product, same thing, right? They're buying the same thing, but in their mind, they're buying it for a different reason. Now, if you could understand that, if that makes sense to you, it'll change everything as far as your business goes. I promise you, it's one of the biggest uh, breakthroughs that a lot of people have when they work with me is really understanding that you can indeed market with different messages, just go out to different markets. But remember, narrow is your strategy. Narrow is how you make that happen. The narrower, the better, the more specific, the better. And especially, uh, it works really well if you can use numbers. If you can say, I'm going to help you earn you know, an extra $1,500 a month rather than I'm going to you a millionaire that works much better people can get their head around fifteen hundred dollars uh you know they can't so much get their head around a million dollars if they're barely get, scraping by at this point right so we want to make it narrow we want to make it believable we want to make it something that people will say wow okay this sounds like it may be the solution you know what i'm going to sign up for your newsletter you know what i'm going to come to your website i'm going to go read your blog i'm going to show up for your live events i'm going to do all these things because i think i really believe that you have the answer so now get it, let's get back to social media because that was a, sort of the point of this particular uh, Periscope and, or podcast today. And I want to talk to you about this is a very, very fertile testing ground for you. Now, you might say, what do you mean a testing ground? It's social media. There's all these people following me. I've got Twitter. I've got all, you know, I've got all these people, all these different groups all over the place. True. And it's a very fertile and powerful testing ground. Let me go back. Let me wind the clock back to the 1980s when I first got started in marketing. When I first got started in marketing, if I wanted to test an idea, right, the online world was only geeks back then. It was really only programmers. There really wasn't much else. America Online started to come along, but it really wasn't until a little bit later. Like the 90s was really the hot spot. But in the 80s, it was all bulletin board systems, right? And these were really, really, really geeky kinds of things. So online didn't exist. For all intents and purposes, it didn't exist from, from a marketing perspective. So if I wanted to test an idea, guess what I had to do? I had to write a letter. I had to create a postcard, right? I had to get things printed. I had to put things in envelopes. I had to put postage on each one of them, drop them in the mail, sit back and wait two, three, four weeks sometimes before I know whether or not my idea was going to be successful. Today, fast forward to today, and I'll show you the difference. If I want to come up with an idea, I want to have an idea for something, a headline, I want to test or something like that, I can put that into Twitter. I can put that into Facebook, and I know within minutes, if I'm starting to get likes right away, I'm in the right direction. If I'm starting to get no likes, nothing happens, and that post is dead, it's not going to work. I'm in the wrong direction. That instant feedback is so powerful because, and I tease on, on this, I'm going to tease you guys here too. When I talk about marketing, I always tease people and say, marketing is a code word. It's actually French. It's a code word for testing. It's not French. It's not really a code word. But I like to tease that because the truth of the matter is you want to be a good marketer. You want to make a lot of money. You want to be very successful in your business. You need to test. And today we have all these tools. There's no reason in the world why you should not be testing everything. Test your headlines. Test your graphics. Test your website. Uh, and see what the response is. You know, we got that little like button on there. People love to hit the like button. You know, I look at the heart set I get when I'm doing Periscope. Or I look at the uh, number of replays that that people um, will watch my videos. And I look at the stats on the website. How many people are coming to robertembriali.com, for instance, or ultimatewealth.com? How many people, how long are they staying? All this is information that I can use to know whether or not my message is hitting home or it's missing. It's going right by the people that I want to reach. And, you know, you make those corrections. Remember, narrower focus is better than wide. So, you know, think of it in terms, if you want to think in terms of photography, you want a long lens that's very narrow focus rather than a wide lens that's sort of, sort of on your iPhone, right? You don't want that kind of lens. It takes in too much. There's just too much going on. You want to be very focused. And I think if you'll do that, you'll make a huge difference, not only just in your social media. That's a great place to start. And if people are responding to you on social media, you can get them to do a lot of things. You can get them to subscribe to your newsletter. You can get them to buy products. You can get them to show up to your periscopes. You can get them to show up, uh, you know, and like your Facebook page, share your posts and that kind of thing. And all of a sudden the ball starts to roll and you say, wow, these people are so lucky. Well, they're not really lucky. They followed a few basics. They got the basics right. And once the basics started to work and they kept doing them over and over, then they created the positive momentum that you're seeing today. So with that, I want to encourage you Think narrow, don't think wide, think niche, think niche, think narrow, and uh, really think in terms of what solution you provide or the products or services the companies you represent provide to those people who should and could be uh, watching and buying from you.